you know, we have a lot of retail infrastructure that was just built up over time in the U.S. that changes, uh, like each market is different for certain reasons. But, you know, it gives people hope that there's a continued opportunity to grow their e-commerce presences. Hey, gang, it's Thursday, January 4th. Jenny, Jeremy, and listeners, welcome to the Behind the Numbers Daily and eMarketer podcast. I'm Marcus. Today, I'm joined by two people. Let's meet them. We start with our vice president of all the research based in New York. It's Jennifer Pearson. Hi, Marcus. Jenny, welcome back. Welcome back. We're also joined by our senior director of Everything Briefings based in New York. It's Jeremy Goldman. Hey, great to be with you. Happy New Year and happy National Spaghetti Day. Is it? Why do you know this? Uh, I'm just excited for January okay. 4th at Spaghetti Day. Why would I not be excited? That's true. Who doesn't know that? That's the real question. Uh, today's fact is not that. Today's fact, what, folks, is the official sport of Maryland? It's the first state to have an official sport. I guess others do, but it was the first one to do it. But guess what sport it is? I'll give you a hint. It's very old fashioned, this sport. It's going to be really random, so... Yeah. I think hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Is it like fencing or jousting or something oh like that? Oh my god, Jeremy. Wait. That is jousting. Jousting. Jou- I, I was like, <laughs> I was I was joking. It, it's became really the, jou- it became the official sport of Maryland in 1962. Yep. Oh Michael LeRae of Culture Trip explains that the Maryland State Jousting Championship, just in case you were thinking about heading over, is held annually, but they're non contact, thank goodness, <laughs> ring tournaments. So uh, competitors on horseback with a lance uh, try to spear hanging rings of various sizes whilst quickly riding by. The rings, they're small, they range in diameter from a quarter of an inch to two inches and they're hung nearly seven feet off the ground because obviously you're on top of the horse fancy a go that's crazy maybe jenny we can get tracy to joust with us yeah. one time Tracy's maybe she Maryland. competes maybe uh, tracy why. our colleague in maryland maybe that's why she lives there <laughs> for the that's tournament. Her <laughs> yeah, for the annual tournament i'm moving I'll tell you that much uh today's real topic the future of digital in 2024 In today's episode, first in the lead, we'll cover how we expect the digital world to change in 2024. No in other news today, too much to get to here. So let's talk, folks. We just finished our future of digital. I said we, I didn't do anything. But um, you just finished your future of digital 2024 report, which looks at how folks will be spending their time and money in 2024 and the opportunities for advertisers and retailers. And we're going to talk through uh, some of those expectations for this year. Or we'll talk about how we expect people to spend their time, spend their money, uh, and some opportunities for the advertising folks at the end of the episode. Let's start with the biggest trend of 2024 when it comes to how consumers spend their time. Jeremy, I'll start with you. What are you expecting in terms of how people spend their time and how that might change over the next 12 months? So this is kind of like a broad macro trend that we really wanted to spotlight in this latest report, which is that time spent on media has kind of reached a bit of a plateau, you know, and this is focused on U.S. in terms of media per day, per U.S. adult. You know, we say 12 hours, 11 minutes for 2023. And then for this year, a whopping three minute or so increase. I think what's really interesting about that is that there's just such this, there's a convergence happening where everybody, every major player is getting into everybody else's business because you're fighting over these smaller increments of growth. You know, it's Mm -hmm. getting to be very difficult. And if you look Mm. at that three minutes, like that's very little compared to like 2019 versus 2020. It was nearly an hour. Obviously, we know because of COVID, but it was a 54 minute increase versus three minutes now. So it's just getting really competitive to reach today's consumers. Yeah, the time pie isn't growing. And so anymore, at least. And so people are having to fight for whatever is is there. To your point, that was one that really jumped out to me as well. Time spent on media each day has basically stopped growing as the trends. Yeah, as Jeremy was saying, no, no, I mean, you can take 2022 to 2025 and time spent with media per day by Americans will go up just four minutes 
reaching those 12 hours and 16 minutes. And as Jeremy said, it jumped by over an hour from 2019 to 2020 and then, you know, 2021. People adding over an hour to their daily media diets. What's also interesting, Jeremy, is when you look at what's going on by media, one of the by medias that jumped out to me was time spent on social is flat growing just just three minutes from 2022 to 2025. So I'm assuming the rest of the activities are also going to kind of mirror that trend that a lot of things are flattening out. And it's not like you have one thing going up, one thing going down. And that means overall time is breaking even. Well, maybe just a little in the digital connected TV area and then linear TV going down. Mm, I wouldn't know mm -hmm. if they're one to one switching off, but we're definitely seeing a big decline in linear TV. And then perhaps that time is then increasing on the connected TV platforms. A lot of that is led by the younger generations who are almost exclusively watching the digital or streaming connected TV as opposed to uh, linear TV. But okay. yes, uh, in the social realm, I think we have noted that TikTok is really what's given that incremental time spent rise in social, but for the most part, it's kind of flat. It's that uh, that time is not increasing on social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time spent watching TV in 2024. You're right, Jenny, that is one of the activities that we are seeing go down. Three hours and 40 minutes at the moment. But if you look at that time from 2021 to today, to 2024, over those three years, time with TV would have lost about 15 minutes. So it's kind of like cable in the same respect that it's it's not dropping off a cliff. It is going down, you know, a little bit each year rather consistently, but it's pretty resilient, all things considered. What's happening by age when you we scratch below the surface with regards to that TV time, Jenny? Right. Yeah. So the younger uh, generation, younger age groups are just so much less time spent on linear TV. So looking at 18 to 24 year olds, so that very uh, talked about Gen Z generations only spending 53 minutes daily watching linear TV. If you compare that to older age groups, 55 to 64, 65 plus, it's over four hours daily of linear TV. So such wow. a huge, and as just a huge difference. And as that age group, those younger age groups age up, if they keep those media habits in a similar fashion, then we're definitely going to see a downward trend on linear TV. Mm-hmm. Jeremy, what are you expecting to see with regards to the changes in how people will spend their money this year? So one thing that we noticed, and this is this year, but then again, you know, going further into the future, is that we're getting to a very interesting moment where consumers will be spending, you know, again, this is not going to be until 2027, but we're starting to see a little bit of momentum towards a point where consumers will be spending one in five dollars online, you know, by that point, by 2027. You know, so again, you know, a bit of a plateau. We are not seeing the growth that we saw, you know, pre-pandemic. But, uh, you know, we see like a major milestone on the very near horizon. And mm -hmm. that's really interesting because people have kind of been wondering that, you know, like how far can uh, U.S. e-commerce penetration grow? Like China, right. for instance, it's at 45.9 percent. In the U.S., it's 15.6. <laughs> right. So and some of this is that there are market differences. And, you know, we have a lot of retail infrastructure that was just built up over time in the U.S. that changes uh, like each market is different for certain reasons. But, mm -hmm. you know, it gives people hope that there's a continued opportunity to grow their e-commerce presences. So. Consumers, yeah, will be spending this year 83% of their dollars in store versus 17%, nearly 17% online. To your point, in China, nearly half of shopping is done online compared to that 17% in the US. The UK, 30% is done online. So the takeaway for me there, Jeremy, is stores still rule significantly and to your point you're looking at where we're going to be in the future one in five dollars read the other way four in five still in store what's your take on this trend do you see it more as pay attention to e-commerce because it, a growing share is starting to move there of the retail dollars or do you see it more as it's just not as important as brick and mortar so definitely definitely don't pay as much attention as the headlines suggest 
I mean, I say a lot of it has to do with how a business is positioned and built. If you happen to have a very strong retail infrastructure, then great. You can do a lot of innovative things, you know, improving the customer experience, you know, through digital technology to have a better omnichannel presence so that you can drive more dollars through your stores. You know, mm -hmm. obviously buy online, pick up in store, or click and collect, depending on whatever you want to call it, and shipping from the store and using the store as a mini command center and a major part of your supply chain uh, to fulfill orders, these are things that we're seeing that winning retailers are able to do. So certainly there are a lot of opportunities to grow your business through retail, even if you totally overlook e-commerce, because you're right, you know, to your point, it is not going to be, you know, anywhere close to half of dollars spent uh, anytime soon. Right. What you're saying there, though, is so interesting, which is we have to break out the numbers so that we can give them to you guys, to, to the listeners, to the clients, the people who use the information. But realistically, consumers don't think about this at all. They just think of store. They think of buying the thing. And as soon as you get anywhere near to buying it store, buying it online, buying it in this place, that place. That's not how consumers think. And you've got to get away from that as fast as possible and just make it one experience as best you can. One other thing on this I thought was really interesting. 40% of all shopping in China is done on a mobile phone. Of all shopping, total retail, not just the online portion. 40% of all shopping done on the mobile in China versus 7% just 7% in America. That makes sense. They leapfrogged the laptop and they were the smartphone, the, the mobile phone was the first uh, entry point in, into the internet for a lot of people in China, lower cost um, device. And so that does make sense, but just staggering differences there. Jenny, what about for you? What, what are you paying most attention to this year when it comes to how consumers are going to spend their money differently than previous years? Yeah, I think looking at the categories where our consumers are deciding to purchase and make that e-commerce purchase, we have a forecast of the change is most great in our food and beverage and the consumer products category. So some of that was quick reaction to the pandemic and making sure those really crucial items and essentials were available. And that has kind of held over a bit and that it made it more easier and more comfortable for consumers to buy those e-commerce categories online. So we're seeing the biggest change in those two categories this mm -hmm. year. I think comfortable is a good word there. Um, I was looking at the share of these categories, 8% of all food and beverage sales in America are online and ticking up slowly but surely. Uh, it's a big market, so it's going to take a while. And 21% of health and personal care is online. Also, that share also growing as we move into the future. Let's end, folks, by talking about some of the opportunities, the biggest opportunities for advertisers in 2024. What are we paying attention to here? What, what should advertisers be paying attention to here? I'll go in on that younger generation again, younger cohort of where are they spending their time? If that's a leading indicator of where to put some marketing dollars. And I think I've noticed some pretty good streaming commercials these days, much better quality, better products featured. So I'd put my money there. That's why I'm in your little Have you guys noticed some better quality ads on your platforms lately? I've noticed the same ads on the platforms recently, which has been a problem for a long, long time. But you made a really good point in this report, which is CTV retail media. There is going to be more and more inventory available. So you're going to start to see more of these ads on more of these streaming platforms, particularly as the advertising video on demand platforms start to become more and more popular. People with tighter budgets don't want to spend money on a million streaming things to watch all of their things. And the, the note, a number you had in here, CTV retail media growing from 2% of retail media pie last year to 6% this year, writing that that's driven by the launch of ads on Amazon Prime Video. So I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's a really good focal point for advertisers for next year, those ads in those places. I think, yeah, Jenny's right, and uh, especially in the sense that there are, for instance, streaming pause ads, you know, that are a bit of a newer format, right? And if people are highly engaged with CTV, like you have to take an action to pause. And that's a, to me is a really compelling place because they've taken an action. And then what does that tell you? You know, like their quick restroom break, you know, or getting up to get a, a snack. So something like that, where it's an innovative format that breaks through the clutter. Another thing that I think is worthwhile to mention in terms of what advertisers and marketers need to do to get out there is to try, you know, test and learn with new formats and, you know, 
perfect example is there's obviously a lot of talk about generative AI features that have been added into things like, you know, Snap's My AI, Meta launching its own AI chatbots on its platform. So how can you basically try to embed yourself in, it could be a partnership, it doesn't have to be like a pure ad, just to do something that breaks through the clutter that the consumer is not yet used to that feels novel. You know, there are going to be a lot of opportunities to do things like that over the next year. And that's something that, especially considering the fact that everybody has all the information they need to, you know, plug and play the same types of ads with compelling creative, you know, on Meta and Google to figure out where else you can play, where other people aren't really maximizing yet. I think that's a, a golden opportunity for brands. Yeah. And then going with the social also is leveraging it for commerce. So to go ahead and complete the purchase or at least begin mm -hmm. and that purchase there. Yeah. I, I think we've got to make it more seamless for people because like the QR code, for example, you, you're watching a a show, you're streaming something and a QR code pops up and they say scan it, which has gotten easier to do. But it's a thing you've got to do. You've got to take your phone out. You've got to aim it. Maybe you've got to run closer to the TV because you have a huge house. And then from there, maybe you don't want to interact with that product right in that moment. So I wonder whether we're going to, best alternative in the future is going to be voice commands. It's going to be being able to say, add to cart, add to wish list, And then you can scroll over that product in your own time, on your phone, on your laptop. Because then if you said that, maybe it throws it in your cart. You go to your laptop later on and you can have a look. It's scrolling on your TV for a product or even your smartphone in that moment, having to do it in that moment, as opposed to just if you're cooking over your shoulder saying, save that for later. I wonder if that's going to become more user-friendly better for the buying experience, perhaps. We'll see. That's definitely, I think, a really valid point. I mean, you have, and this is Jenny's territory with demographics, but I think that there are certainly people, particularly in younger generations, that are playing with their phone and, you know, using it as a second screen as they watch. And then there are people who just aren't, right? You know, and, and they often skew older. I think we have some data on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So as a result, it's somebody might not even have their phone available. So, I mean, that is a bit of a problem. And that's mm -hmm. going to be something that has to be solved over time. Yep. All right, folks. Well, for more insights on digital trends for this year, check out the full report. It's called The Future of Digital 2024. You can head to insiderintelligence.com for that or click the link in the show notes. But that's all we've got time for for today's episode. Thank you so much to my guests. Thank you to Jenny. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you to Jeremy. Pleasure as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you to Victoria, who edits the show, James, who copy edits it, Stuart, who runs the team, and Sophie, who does our social media. And thanks to everyone for listening in. We hope to see you tomorrow for the Behind the Numbers Weekly Listen video podcast from eMarketer. For the video version, head to YouTube at Insider Intelligence slash podcasts. Or for the audio version, it's in the same places as before. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Oh, no.